Our field is filled with a bunch of ineffective systems. That said, there are sometimes some people out there that do things very, very differently, and you should learn from them. We're gonna highlight one of them today. Let's just roll that intro. So in the field of behavior analysis and elsewhere, but particularly in our field, there are these things that are called special interest groups, and they are a SIG for short. These SIGs essentially are a place where people that share a common perspective or worldview of like behavior analysis can come together and they can focus on special certain things that they are interested in, hence SIG. So ABI, for example, Association of Behavior Analysis International has a ton of different SIGs. They all, to a varying degrees, are productive. Oftentimes you're directed to go talk with somebody that are in these SIGs or to work and collaborate with them because they are the kind of place for everybody to come together and collaborate. Now, this doesn't always happen. Some of them do, some of them don't. If you're ever interested, just DM or reach out, give you an idea of who's in there. Um, and I encourage you to reach out to them as well. I think inherently they're well-intended, but oftentimes we find the busiest, most passionate people that are responsible for a bunch of other things in their life are also responsible for those things working and moving forward. And I don't hold them against that at all. I think it's just a system that isn't designed perfectly. That said, some of them sometimes work extremely efficiently. So today on the Daily BA, we bring in an example of that. So Abigail Calkin, part of uh, one of the SIGs that I've listed here in the Association of Behavior Analysis International, worked with some other colleagues, got a grant, developed a tool, and worked with people in mental health when it comes to military and veterans work. And they created this uh, tool they're gonna talk about here. So check it out and I'll, I'll be back. I <laughs> said, now I know you're from New England. <laughs> okay, my cool necklace, which actually will blink. Oh, nice. At a couple of different speeds. Is uh, from Accelerate Innovations. And it's a, a app on the iPad. Okay, just for iPad or can you get any Just phones? for iPad. Just for iPad, okay. And it's just for the standard acceleration chart. Oh, okay, cool. So you can chart yearly, monthly, and soon you'll be able to put daily behavior on there. Okay, cool. What's the, like, you were telling me about the goal of it was just kind of to get it out there? Is that kind of just get so everybody can have the chart in their hands? or Yeah, right, right, right. right. And make and it a little more accessible. Accessible and trying to make it simple so that people just right. enter the data and then the chart is there. Because you know as chart nerds, we're like, it is simple. <laughs> <laughs> you somebody, that. Yeah, we hand somebody the big blue chart and they're like, what, what is this? Right. what's logarithmic it scale? Is so, yeah, I don't even mention it. In fact, even right. when I was still teaching the paper chart, I didn't mention it. Right. You know, it's like, uh, and every now and then I might run into somebody who said, well, this is a logarithmic scale. And right. I'd say, yeah, you're right. Yeah, always high five. Moving those. right on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just give him a quick high five. <laughs> right. Yeah. right. I, that, I always like the McGreevy's, like, change a little bit you know how we make for things that are less than one per minute oh instead right, of things right. that happen you know 0 0.01 time per minute it, the it's way hard I, to conceptualize the way i always explain it is you start at the bottom of the chart and it's one per day right right and right. and then two three four five six seven ten per day when you get to ten uh -huh. you start counting by tens totally did you ever see the stephanie bates charting rates with stephanie bates i did is that a video uh it was actually done on um uh, uh Oh, the cassette tape, and okay. uh, and so it's and, an audio recording. Yes. Okay. And and then she and then they were slides. Okay. And then it went to microfiche, and then uh, what was the next iteration? I guess on the computer. But Stephanie Bates was five years old. Wait, what's it called? Charting rates with Stephanie Bates. Charting rates. Right. And Stephanie Bates, uh, her dad, um, Doug Bates, was one of Og's students. Okay. In the sixties, and. Stephanie Bates was five years old. They spoke German in the home, and so they explained. He explained the chart to her in German, and she had the whole thing down in German, and then she gives it in English. This oh, that's a five-year-old. Oh, a five-year-old. A five-year-old, <laughs> and so I she, think one of my mentors always tells me that. Like, you know, listen, if we can teach little kids to chart, <laughs> right, right. You can, you can and so he explained the, you know, top half of the chart. You know, this is the one line: Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Mm -hmm. And then, so she gets on there and she says, and the bottom half of the chart 
are decimal fractions, but I don't know about decimal fractions. <laughs> so my daddy told me a new way to do it. And so it's, this is one per day and two per day and three, and when you get to nine and then you get to 10, you start counting by tens. Okay. And yeah. this is tw 10 per day, 20 per day. That is the way I always explain the bottom half of the chart. Right. That's it. It's a really, and they it's, get it. Because the, you know, point zero one per, it's hard to conceptualize. Right. And it's hard to kind of like wrap your mind around like how that feels, you know, it's not a, something we can really. Right. And today, uh, when I was giving my workshop on inner behavior, um, one of the, places is it was talking about depression and doing something and it was one in every 10 minutes well i didn't say it was point one right i just right, said right, this right. is i was doing one action every 10 minutes that's right. really slow that's called depressed behavior right, right and so and then you can and nobody asked me about that nobody's ever asked me about that right when you explain the bottom half of the chart that way it makes it so much easier. Yeah, it makes it yeah, so it much does. easier. It does. Yeah. Totally. So, what are your what are your talks on the one on Sunday? <clears throat> the one on Sunday is on um, some of the data that we have from the Air National Guard, the research project that okay. we did with there on suicide, uh, looking at suicide, and we used a systems or a systems approach as opposed to an individual, a clinical approach, and it's the first time that anybody's taken a look at suicide in the military from a systems point of view. Right. So okay. looking at the whole system of the Air National Guard. So kind of almost like a more of like a, like, uh, more of a conceptual, like a, like a Cantorian almost look at it. No, it was a data. I mean, it's, it's data based and you know, what are the behaviors that we want? But are you charting at? like all the things that each individual soldier We did not charge, no, we didn't chart individual soldiers. Oh, okay. So we were looking at um, we were looking at we looked at ten different units <clears throat> and you know uh, how many orders were given in that unit. Okay. How many? So you're uh, like, like kind of like contextual analysis. Right, right. Okay. Orders in that unit, suicides in that unit, and then we went around and looked at those are just two examples. And then we went around. We were at ten different bases throughout the country. Oh, how did you get like access to like, get this data? And stuff? The Air National Guard. Really? You know, yeah, we, we had a project with them and they That's gave really us cool. the data. But the data belongs to them. So when we charted it, we don't have access to it. So we had to get permission to disseminate. To, well, not really even disseminate, but to discuss it at the conference, for okay, instance, right, right. to do the presentations. Oh, interesting. Yeah, right. It really, it really is. That's interesting. Yeah. Right. Well, like I said, that was military government. Yeah, right, like, whatever. Yeah, that's, what I, yeah. <laughs> well, that's really cool that you got access to it, at least. It is, it is. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. That's a really cool analysis, mm -hmm. too. It, it is incredible. What I is... I feel really good about that. Yeah. So, what is, like, is there any call to action after the... Like, what's next? Uh, or, like, where are your What is next with that would be or, that we would need... Yeah, and we, we had a presentation to the military in uh, D.C. And when you say to the military, to who in the military? To the Air National Guard headquarters, to the central office people in the Okay, Air so kind of like they're higher ups. Right, 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 right. They're kind of commanding. commanding. Mm, they're command structure, right, right okay. yeah. And so we, we presented that, and then what they decide to do with that information is, of Absolutely. course, up to them. Right, yeah. Right. Yeah, so we'd love to get another contract with the military, but we don't have one. You know, another project with the military. But we don't How have long one. did that project run for? One year. One year? One year. Okay. Right, cool. which included, you know, us setting it up and uh, contacting the different places, deciding where we were going to go, right. and then writing up the final report and turn it in. So it was a good project. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. So, normally I do inner behavior kinds of things, but that, you know, suicide, post-traumatic stress disorder, it all relates to, right. to inner behavior. How did you get into that, like, kind of into which? area of interest? Which? Like, suicide and... Oh, uh, probably through, <coughs> excuse me, my interest in inner behavior. Oh, okay, right. And then working with Kent Corso, and his, uh, he's interested in suicide, so okay. it was a suicide you know, looking at the suicide data, not looking at PTSD. Right. That wasn't something we looked at. Right, PTSD, like, how do you objectively quantify PTSD, right? How do you make pinpoints for PTSD? Well, you look at the different behaviors, and, you know, I mean, there might be multiple So, like, when PTSD is defined, right, as a construct, 
you look at all of the, the classes of I, I would look at, I mean, we haven't done this, but I would look at uh, alcohol use, uh, drug use, oh, okay, um, right. job, marital, uh, marital PTSD status. PTSD isn't really marital. a thing. It's just kind of a description of other things. Right, right. right. That's yeah. a good point. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's, yeah, it's not a thing. It's not a thing. It's, it's right. how do people react to being in stressful situations? Right. And so you've got a ton of different behaviors there. That you can quantify. That, yeah. You, and you can quantify them all. Right, right, right. You know, I, I've yet to meet a behavior that you can't quantify. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I will someday, but I haven't met it yet. <laughs> it might take me a while. <laughs> yeah. And uh, someone threw a question at me at the workshop I gave today, and I, he and I are going to need to talk about it because you know one of the things that that I haven't I, and I haven't quantified yet is what is an urge and where do they come from? How do we? Urge is a hard word. And it's a well, it's it's but it's it's there. It's right. you know it's a concept. You know. It's more than a concept. It can be a behavior. Right. You know, it's like what what makes somebody pick up a rifle or a handgun and shoot something? There's an urge involved there somewhere. But I don't know how many urges. I do know that an urge is respondent conditioning the first time it occurs. Okay. And then right. afterwards it becomes mixed in with operant. Yeah, there's and so you get consequences. the operant and the right. the um, respondent behaviors mixed in together. Yeah, it's that so. Anyway, yeah. he is really, really interested in this. Oh, and that's the questions that are the so, best. Yeah, people so, who are really interested. So in he and I, you know, <clears throat> he's like, "Can I Skype with you once a week? You know, can I?" Well, actually, he said, "Can I Skype with you every day?" Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I said, "How about once a week? You know, once a month, something like that." Yeah. So yeah. We're, but I don't know. You know, it's like we've got research on suicide. We've got research on PTSD within, you know, the uh, behavior analysis community, but I don't know anyone, but I, I, because I haven't looked in clinical psychology, but what, what research do we have on urges? Yeah, that's an interesting question. I have no idea. Right, I don't either. Yeah. So. Interesting description of, uh, the interesting word, a thought, or a mm -hmm. concept, an urge. Right, yeah, because it's not a thought, Right. it's not a feeling. It's a separate... Could you look at it as like almost an M.O.? Tell me more. What do you mean? Like what an urge. Would... Instead of looking at it as a like a behavior itself, could you look at it as something that is like... Uh, oh, what's the word? Um, potentiating. Like potentiating a behavior. Could. Yeah, that would be an, uh, a possibility. Right. I don't know. Edit that out. I look at it Probably right really wrong. now. <laughs> I look at it right now as a respondent behavior the first time it occurs. Right. And so what happens to it afterwards so when it, it gets I, there's a, a consequence. There's a consequence to all behavior. So But but you know it's it's uh, you might have no consequence to it. You know, say say it's an urge, a fear urge. You're about to do something and you've got I mean, I'm talking off the top of my head right, right now. Right, I don't right. have any data on this. And <clears throat> so you have an urge in a particular, a fear urge. Okay. And and what is, what happens? But isn't that, the urge defined as like, as like kind of a call to action within yourself? Like, a, is, wasn't that kind of what it is? Like an urge to do something, like you feel like you need to do a thing? Well. So what would yeah, be a fear be, urge? Fear urge is a fear of... A fear would be an urge. Right? Would be an urge to move away, move away, or, yeah. uh, protect yourself. You know, something. Um, I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, I mean, even if your fear urge isn't the consequence, isn't what that fear was related to. There's still a consequence. Right. Right. So, like, if you're afraid that you know, uh, say you're using a zip line. Mm -hmm. Right, your fear urge would be to not jump off, right? But say you did jump off, the consequence would be like you were safe. So even if that fear wasn't kind of fulfilled, it would still have the consequence of like. Yeah, for some reason, I always think of it in a military context, and I've never been in the military, and I've never right. been in this situation that I know of. Maybe in New York City when I was a kid, but you know, you're you're a 
a group of people is coming up on a corner and they've got, you know, perspiration going, I mean, all these things have been tamped down by basic training, but they got perspiration, increased heartbeat, um, breathing rate increases, and they get to the corner and there's nothing there. There's, so those physiological so whole, responses aren't paid off, right? No, they're not. Yeah. And so, and the fear is not paid off. And so what happens the next time they approach a corner? What happens the 19th time they approach a corner? And those responses happens? would decrease, right? I would think so. Right. But then I mean, what happens on the 20th time when all of a sudden there is somebody there? Right. And But I have no data on this. Right, right, right. right you know, right. and it's because I... I think it's a one-time thing because then it gets, it, you know, as a response Comes behavior the and then it moves into the operant world, so yeah. I'm still... So there's a quick example of how these special interest groups can be ran extremely effective and lead to really cool outcomes. Now, unfortunately, that data is proprietary that they're collecting for that project originally to um, the, the funding agencies, essentially the government and the military own those sort of things as a, they paid for it. That said, this tool, Accelerate, is coming out on the market. I'm not sure exactly when it's out, but it's free. Everybody's able to go check it out. Now, if you want to learn more about Abigail, I've linked a couple of my favorite articles by her. She has done some phenomenal, fantastic work. She's done a lot of narrative books as well, so you can go in and read about those. Um, she is one of the kindest humans. She's actually the first person that I actually did some sort of like behavior analysis uh, blog style video with um, about two years ago. I'll link that up here as well. We went to go check out uh, this really cool, cool project she worked on years ago. So anyhow, check her out. And if you don't mind, write her on Facebook or whatever. Just tell her like, thank you for the work that she's doing. She's a perfect exemplar of somebody that doesn't stop, keeps going, gives back to the community. And um, that is something that this field is about. So with that said, it's your daily BA and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Don't click out. I forgot to tell you, we have this running of these Skinner posters, okay? If you want a poster, you want a sticker, you want uh, a t-shirt, anything like that, the link is down in the description below, so go check them out. Now, I'll really see you. Today we talk about that video that the BACB recently put out talking about our field. Here we go.